Welcome to a little bit of Lab Rat Fun Networking with Fish. We're going to go ahead and complete that series. It was a three part series. First, we put the OSPF up between Router 1 and the Spirant Test Center and advertised some prefixes. And then we had another one, which was BGP between Router 2 and the Spirant Test Center. Now we're going to send traffic in between. So, again, we had OSPF. Now, in the OSPF YouTubes, we had VLAN 11 and VLAN 12, two different ways of configuring the OSPF and starting it up. We're only going to use VLAN 12 in this one, so we have the OSPF IPv4. All of this would still work for IPv6 as well, by the way. Um, and then we have the BGP up and running, and now we're going to do the traffic. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a stream between um, OSPF route prefixes coming in from the Spirant Test Center behind the OSPF neighbor that Router 1 has talking to prefixes from uh, the BGP neighbor that uh, Router 2 is talking to. So if you recall correctly in our other YouTube we had the OSPF sending 10 prefixes 10.12.1.0 through 2 and including 10.12.10.0 and the BGP was sending 10 prefixes, 10.21.1.0 through to and including 10.21.10.0. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go to the Spiron Test Center to start to create the above streams. Um, of course, you'll notice that the wording there is to start to create the uh, above streams, which means we're not going to be successful um, because of a pet peeve of mine. So let's go ahead and go over to here. And first and foremost, if we go to um, all hosts. We still have our OSPF up. This is the VLAN 11 one. This is the VLAN 12 one. We can actually change this and say VLAN 12 OSPF. Um, and then we do have our BGP up. It's still established. So if we go to streams, the four streams that you actually see there are from the original YouTube series, which was the start of all of these before these individual examples which is um, I had had streams that were built and I was using them offline um, but what we're going to do and that was actually host so what we're going to do is we're going to add a stream and so I tend to already know when I'm creating a stream what I want to do so I tend to click off the project click these two go to next I can see this because I'm used to seeing this but from your perspective if we close these, what you'll notice is, is that we have, we'll collapse them all together. Source is on the left, destination is on the right. Uh, typically with unicast traffic, um, I will be sending two unicast streams. So I will be doing them in pair. I will be doing bi-directional, so two unicast streams. And I'll also be doing show all headers. So pair, bi-directional, show all headers. This is... Uh, the majority of what I do when it has to do with unicast. Um, what we're going to do is we will just expand uh, and keep port 1-1 on the left and we will expand and keep port 1-2 uh, on the right. So this is port 1-1 and we're not looking at the devices themselves and we're also not looking at VLAN 11. So we're looking at the VLAN 12 OSPF prefixes. So if I click here, these are the prefixes that are being advertised from behind the OSPF peer. And again, if we come over here, we're not looking at device, we're actually looking at the BGP prefixes that are being advertised. So if we do an add, and then we do a next, and we'll go ahead and leave this as it is, um, and we do a next, and we'll just leave this as it is too, and next, and next and finish um, over at the existing no I don't want to over at the existing what we will see is if we go ahead and rename these you can tell that these are the ones this gray one here um, this is the uh, summary LSA so this is OSPF to BGP and this one is uh, BGP to OSPF. So you can also do tags and so we could say routing traffic uh, and then add this um, and this is the traffic that actually is our routing um, and the other ones are our streams. So we can easily see them and we'll go ahead and get rid of this index here. 
So this is summary LSA. So if you actually look at this, which is interesting, this is the summary LSA. So this is a lot of different um, prefixes talking to a lot of different prefixes. So I do have an issue with that. My issue with that is that um, I personally view that this is trying to test too many things at the same time and I'm very mindful at trying to figure out what is it that people are trying to test. So if we just look at this one thing and do a preview, um, this summary LSA, because I clicked all of them, what we're actually doing is we're doing this. So we're doing uh, 10 streams, 10 flows, and so from my perspective, um, one of the issues I have with that is I might have um, multiple paths in a proof of concept environment. So with equal cost, uh, multi-path, I might be doing source destination, so I might be sending some this way and some that way. If that is what is the purpose of the test, that's one thing that tends to not be the purpose of the test. So I tend to not do it this way. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get rid of these two that I just created. Um, yeah, I want to get rid of these. And habit of mine, whenever I sit, click on, see apl apply is green, I just go ahead and I click it. So if we come back here, we attempted to do this. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to call it a fishism. So this is just my years of experience of doing proof of concepts and trying to tease out what is it that we're actually trying to test. Um, because I've, I've had, I've gone down the, the Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole a number of times and I try to, um, I try to kind of sort of keep on the straight and narrow on the spirit of whatever the test is. So what I do is I have what I call a fishism. I create a special host prefix advertisement specifically for this traffic stream. So what you're doing is you might have a thousand OSPF neighbors, I mean a thousand OSPF prefixes on the left and you might have you know 5,000 over on the right from BGP and those are background prefixes. Um, you may also want to, if it's the test, you may want to flap them. So inject them, pull them out, inject them, pull them out. Um, meanwhile, this one specific traffic stream is supposed to stay solid. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and do that instead. So it gives me a lot of um, wiggle room if the test changes. Uh, so what I'm going to do is from that perspective, as you see up here on the OSPF side, we're going to go back to the Spirant Test Center and I'm going to add a 10.12.14.101. OSPF is going to add that and then BGP is going to add this other one. They're both going to be host routes. So let's go ahead and go to the Spirant Test Center and do that. So if we come over here and we go to um, devices, on here and we go to OSPF and we go down to the VLAN 12 one we can edit the LSAs and I can go over to summary LSAs so this is my summary LSA that I'm advertising right now and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add another one and so I'm going to add uh, and this is the advertising router ID. So this is a step, but I'm only going to do one, right? And so I said that I'm going to do 10.12.14.101. Um, and it's going to be a slash 32. So I'm going to send a host route, so 10.12.14.101. Um, and it's going to be a slash 32. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to close that. And then I'm going to click apply. And so now I'm going to go ahead and go over to um, R1, which I might not have open. So let's go ahead and open up R1. And let's also make this a little bit bigger. So if we do a show IP route, uh, we now have uh, 10.12, whoops, did I see? Sorry. Uh, 10.12.14.101 slash. 32. It's only been there for 16 seconds. So that's my host 
um, prefix. It's still being advertised by the OSPF neighbor. So as far as what I'm actually trying to test, it's still completely true. So now let's go ahead and go over and do the BGP one. So we're going to come over here to the BGP one and devices and we're going to go to BGP and then we're going to say um, edit routes and I'm going to go ahead and do a, you could also by the way do a duplicate um, so you could just do a duplicate as opposed to an ad you could do a duplicate how many times do I want to copy at one time uh, this is actually going to be um, I only want one and I want 10.21.14.101 and I want this to be a slash 32 and uh, close and apply. Now we should be able to go over to R2 and see that there. So if we go over to R2 and we do a, and we up arrow, uh, now we see 10.21.14.101 slash 32. So that's actually what I like to do is to actually do this and then on the Spire Test Center create a stream between the two slash 32 advertised host routes. Um, and then I can do whatever I want with the other stuff, its background, I can use the command sequencer and withdraw it, I can, because sometimes people will come in and they'll have 10 prefixes over here, 10 prefixes over here, and then when the customer comes in, it's like, oh, well, I want this to be 5,000. Well, um, what happens with Spire and Test Centers, these are called bounded stream blocks. So when you said I wanted this whole bunch of OSPF prefixes to talk to this whole bunch of BGP prefixes, um, you now have extended everything and if you're trying to and if you have ECMP or other things and you're trying to figure out how long it takes um, in my opinion you've just complicated things um, so again focusing on the test so what we're going to do now is we're going to go onto the Spiron test center and create a stream that is just between these two advertised uh, slash advertised host routes so I'm going to come over here and we're going to go back to add and I'm going to click this, click these two, go. Uh, just so that your life is simpler, I'm going to go ahead and keep it so that uh, router 1 and port 1.1, one, one, the OSPF 1 is on the left, and router 2, the BGP port 1.2 is on the right. So again, uh, pair with by default, I want bi-directional. Um, I always do show all headers and I don't want devices and I don't want the VLAN 11 one. Um, and so I want the I want the OSPF. I don't want this one. I want this one. Uh, same thing over here. I don't want device, and I don't want this whole range. I just want this one. So we're going to go ahead and do an add. We're going to do a next, and then I'm going to go ahead and make this 256, and we will call this uh, routing traffic. And uh, these are these are all the defaults. If you want to allow the port to generate to itself, there's a whole bunch of awesome stuff that you can do in here. Um, next, and I'm actually going to do a um, sorry, I'm going to do a frames per second because that's usually what I do. So 100 frames per second, and then finish. No, I don't want to override any of that stuff. And now if we go ahead and look at just the routing stuff, and we'll go ahead and actually call this routing traffic and we'll call this one routing traffic also. This allows us to go ahead and find things more easily in my opinion. You can actually also do a view things and you can look at it based on tags and stuff like that. So um, we're gonna go ahead and click apply. And so now the question is can I, and we'll go ahead and turn this stuff off since that we're not gonna be focusing on that. Uh, can I successfully, so we saw that I was advertising all these prefixes, so can 10 dot, so now we're going to have 10.2, I'm sorry, 10.11.14.101 as a host route, uh, actually having a conversation with the BGP host route equivalent, and that's what this is, and it's going to be 100 frames per second. So, uh, are you ready? So first and foremost, I always click apply. Um, also another habit of mine is I always end up just doing an ARP. 
Uh, this is just using this tool for a long time. All ARPs uh, resolve successfully. Okay, and drum roll please. So we'll go ahead and come here and just say start. Now we're gonna go ahead and look over at the results. And there you go. Um, port uh, 1, 1 is sending 100 frames per second. That is being received by port 1, 2. And port 1, 2 is sending 100 frames per second. That's being received by port 1, 1. If you don't believe me, let's go ahead and take uh, this one. And let's stop that. So we're only actually sending from the OS, OSPF side, so that would be port 1, 1, is sending to the other side. And if we come here, what we see is port 1, 1 is sending 100 frames per second, and port 1, 2 is receiving 100 frames per second. Um, and so let's go ahead and go back up here and start this. And that's it. All done. We have our OSPF, we have our BGP, we have our traffic between. The traffic is a host traffic, um, but still in keeping with doing what we need to do. And then we have the background traffic, which allows us to go ahead and do things like if we want to uh, really crank up those other prefixes, even though I kind of sort of overrode uh, that third octet, so I can't really do that too much. But um, I could go ahead and fix that and then crank them up. I can also do churn routes. All depends on what it is that you're trying to test with the traffic generator. And that's it. Example one, done. Have a good one. See ya.